This is the schematic diagram for a 4-bit adder. Looking at the schematic, we can easily identify that four 1-bit adders have been chained together. The sum outputs still connect to an LED to identify the binary number output. Notice that the carry output on each full adder connects to the next full adder. We can continue chaining the adders together to make an 8 or 16 bit adder. We now have 9 inputs. The higher row of inputs are labelled A0, A1, A2 and A3. These inputs, when turned on, will input the binary value of 1, 2, 4 and 8. We can turn on any combination of the A inputs to create a value between 0 and 15. The lower row of input gates are labelled B0, B1, B2 and B3. These inputs have the same binary value as row A. The output LEDs display binary values for 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. So we can now calculate A plus B up to the value of 30. We also have one more input called carry in. This will add an additional binary one to any output number we already have. Now we have the 4-bit adder in the simulator, we can start to do some testing. Let's set row A to the value of 10. And row B to the value of 5. Our LEDs output the value of 10 plus 5 in binary 1111. And when the carry input is on, we add an additional 1 bit. It now reads 10000, which is 16 in decimal. Turning on all the inputs on A and on B displays the output of 30 and switching the carry input adds one more bit to the final answer. The first digital computers used logic gates, LEDs and switches to output the values such as we have seen. They evolved and became smaller over time until the modern computers we use today were created. And now the adder circuit is etched onto a minute space in our computer's CPU and includes many, many more functions.